Thank you for listening to Christ Alone Podcast, where we believe that Jesus lived, died, and resurrected according to the scriptures. Our hope is that God can bless you through this week's episode. All right, welcome back. You're listening to Angie and Stevens podcast. Angie and Stevens podcast. Christ alone. Christ alone alone podcast. All right. All right, so uh, we are back. uh, You know, we promised we'd uh, stay consistent, and here we are. Um, I do sound a bit stuffed because for the first time in three years, I've I got sick. Uh, I don't usually get sick, um, but uh, but I got sick, and you know, we'll see how I feel tomorrow. But I had to stay home today. Um. Yeah. My our cousin Paula seems to think that it's allergies. If your if your throat is itchy. Yeah. Well, not anymore. So uh, my throat's not itchy anymore, but um, I don't know. I. I think when I go to bed, it'll start bothering me again. Because usually at night is when it bothers me. Yeah, that happens to me too. Like when I'm sick, it it's the worst when you go to sleep. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I kind of gotten into this thing of of uh, not like I don't know. Like I accept that this is God's will. You know, whatever happens to me, and so I'm like, all right, well this. For whatever reason, this is all part of God's sovereign plan, and so, um, like I won't pray for to get better. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I feel like like it's a little bit selfish of me to pray for myself. So, <laughs> I rather pray for someone else. I'm like, I'll survive. Yeah, this is God's plan. If I'm die great, if I die great, I get to meet him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to die is gain. <laughs> yes. I just, I don't know. That's just, that's where my mind is now. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, I don't know. It feels good. When you know, when you have that relationship, like, I I really, I didn't know this is what it was like, to be honest. Like, I always, like, I, I always saw you and admired the relationship that you had with God, which, of course, you nobody can quantify that because everyone's relationship with God is different. And right. I think to compare yourself with, you know, others, I think that's where we make a mistake. Right. Because, like, I wanted, like, when I saw what the relationship you had with God, I'm like, I wanted that. Like, I, I want what my sister had. Like, I want to be where my sister is with God. And then <laughs> it's almost like God was like, all right, so where's your sister at with me? And I couldn't answer that. Yeah. Like I wanted to be where you were at, but I didn't know where you were at. So how how could I want that? Right. So um so yeah, that that just uh kind of brought me down and and to the point where like, all right, well everyone has their own their own relationship with God and to compare yourself or your relationship with God with, with what someone else has with God is obviously a, a mistake because you don't you, there's no way to measure that. Right. So um so yeah, so I didn't know that this is how wonderful it was. And so I'm just I'm happy to be here. You know, where, where I'm at. I know that, you know, there's always room for improvement, but always. I don't think it's selfish to pray for yourself though. I mean, mm-hmm. the Bible says the Bible says you do not have because you do not ask. Yes, when I you know. ask, you ask wrong. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it asks, like, how many times does he say ask? Yeah. All right. Well, Father, I ask that you heal me from uh, the sickness. And I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. I think it's almost... I think it might be almost selfish to not pray to get better because you just want to go to Jesus. You yeah. just want to go to Jesus and leave us behind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I do. I'm so anxious. I'm so anxious. I'm just like, I I don't know. 
you know, every time I step outside and I have the opportunity to look up at the sky, I always think of that, you know, that verse where it's like, when you see all these things happening, you know, look up because yeah. your redemption draws near. And I'm just like, yeah. come, Jesus, like, come quickly. Um, I, I, and then, and then I, I'm, I don't know. Remember how I always said, like, I felt bad wanting Jesus to come quickly. And then, um, you know, I felt bad because I know there are people that needed to be saved. Yeah. But I started thinking, I'm like, well, that would, that would br- put God's, um, sovereignty and omniscience into question, right? Because obviously when he comes it's going to be where the maximum number of people will be you know saved so it's like yeah all right well well <laughs> come quickly then <laughs> like cuz i know <laughs> yeah. that when you come i know it's going to be the perfect it's time it's going to be yeah it's going to be time that's yeah, true so so uh you know so i've gotten over those things but uh that's but good. yeah but we're here and uh yeah we're just happy to be here. We want to thank everybody who um, who stuck with us. This is our uh, our uh, second consecutive episode. <laughs> really, our third, right in the season. But it's but episode three of episode season three two. Of but season it's, three. yeah. But uh, but yeah, we're happy to be here and be back and doing this. So, all right, let's jump into it. That's good. For the record, my brother uh, prefaced this uh, recording by saying. You're gonna do all the talking, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so we'll see. Yeah, it's not <laughs> we'll going well. <laughs> so we're not doing well so far, but that's yeah. not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so today we're gonna talk about um, the second greatest commandment. So obviously, we have the ten commandments, but Jesus focuses in on two, which is the first one being love the God with all that you have. Basically, that's love the God. In his own words. <laughs> Love, did I say the God? Yes, you said love the God. Well, we both, everyone knows who the God is. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength. Um, but today I want to focus, we want to focus on the second one. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Um, so I, I know you're not supposed to be talking much, but what do you, I guess, what do you think of when you think of that second part? Love your neighbor as yourself. Um, let me see. Um, I guess, I guess initially when I, when I, you know, when I was a bootleg Christian and I heard that, my thought immediately was, well, I want to, I want to treat everyone the way that I want to be treated. Yeah. And later, as I kind of just thought about that and got closer to God, I realized, all right, if we are if we are loving God with all our strength and all our mind, soul, and everything, right? If we're doing that, that means we are living righteously through him, right? And or mm-hmm. he's living righteously through us. How however that sounds better. I don't know. What's the proper way, but 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 you, I think you understand what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um. And so when that happens, you you start loving people the way that Christ loves us, and yeah. and so when it says love your neighbor the way, or love your neighbor the way you love yourself, you know it's like you're supposed to look at yourself through God's eyes or at least try to. And, you know, I think that goes in hand in hand with the, you know, um, you know, if you ask God, he will give you the desires of your heart. You know, it's not, it's not your desires that that God wants to give you. It's, it's his desires that, you know, he wants you to want, you know? And so when you have that relationship with God, you, you default to that and and you know a lot of times you do it without even thinking about it yeah and i think of uh going along with what you said i think of the lord's prayer like when the disciples were asking him oh how do you pray and one of the one of the parts is 
uh, forgive us our sins, forgive us our debts as we forgive those who have debts against us or who sin against us. And it just yeah. goes back to kind of what you're saying. Like, like we, sometimes we, we look at our relationship with someone else and we think of an argument or something that happened and we're like, oh, I can't forgive that other person. But if we can't forgive that other person, then we do, do we really have that relationship with God? Because do we really understand God's forgiveness for us that we were like completely damned to hell? Like we were in complete debt um, yeah. Kind of what we talked about uh, last week. And then Jesus came and paid the full price and was like, no, you're, you know, you're a hundred percent forgiven. Everything you have done are doing or will do you're forgiven for all of that. And so when we look at um, when someone hurts us or, or says something against us and we're like, no, I can't forgive you. Then in a sense, we're saying, well, I, I, I see it as in a sense, we're saying, oh, well then you're, you're bigger than God. Yeah. Because God, God could forgive me of all my stuff but you i can't forgive someone else of whatever it is that yeah. they did yeah well god would forgive them if right. they repented um but then you won't forgive them as they're right. repenting and so yeah you you are placing yourself above god um yeah no it um relationship with god is important and you don't really know what that means until you start reading the Bible daily. Um, I yeah. think, you know, it used to be for me that I had a, I had to like fight to read the Bible every day and I was doing it. Mm -hmm. And then, and then there was just days that I would go by and I was like, when was the last time I read the Bible? And, um, and now it's like, and, and I don't, again, I don't say this to like boast, but I'm just saying like to, just to show, you know, what growth in a relationship means is that now I can't tell you when I don't read the Bible because, yeah. because I'm always, if, if I'm not reading it, like, like I'm reading an entire passage or, or chapter or whatever I'm doing regularly, if I'm not doing that, I'm, I'm looking into something. I'm, you know, trying to you know, get clarification on something, um, whatever it may be, you know, so I don't know. It, it, and, it, and I think that's, that's what helps me. At least that's what I've noticed that helps me because the more I'm in God's word, um, the better my relationship is in which it makes sense because Jesus is the word literally. Yeah. He's yeah. literally the word. So when you're in the word, guess what? the word is in you. And mm. I find that, you know, when you come across situations in your life, it's like, you can't help. It's all right. I don't know if you've had this experience, but when you read a book, there are certain things about the book that stick out to you. Right. Mm -hmm. And you can't help, but quote that book when you're confronted with a situation, right? Because you've read right. that book and you know it so well. And so, um, you know, uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, here's here's one. Uh, th there's this a line. Well, this is a movie, not a book. But this is, there's a line from a movie that with Steven Seagal. I, I for those of you who don't know, <laughs> Steven Seagal used to be this really popular actor in the '90s. <laughs> I feel so old. Anyways, <laughs> he's got this. I, you see, when I start explaining things, I give too much detail. Anyways, this actor says this line in a movie. And the, and the line is, <laughs> the line is, um, uh, assumptions are the mother of all screw-ups. He doesn't say it, you know, so nicely. You know, he uses, right. uh, you know, stronger words. But, but, but that line is said in that movie. And ever since I heard that, it stuck with me because I was like, that is so true. And so throughout my life, it's kind of become part of, you know, part of my philosophy that when somebody, you know, has an assumption, I'm like, hey, you know, assumptions are the mother of all screw ups. And, and it's true. And, and it's it's even better when it's true. Right. Um, but but that's the example. So going back to what I was saying, when you spend so much time in the word, then you can't help but 
bring and recall what you know what you've learned from the word and so when, yeah when, I, when i'm down i like i think about certain verses and and it's just incredible to me um i i remember somebody saying i'm trying to think who it was maybe it was paul washer by the way i love that man he's incredible <laughs> paul washer are you familiar with him no he's wonderful oh lovely man he's he's he speaks Spanish. You wouldn't think it, but he speaks Spanish because he lived in Peru uh, uh, for for a couple of years. But anyways, um, I think it was him who said, you want to consume the Bible, you want to consume the Word so much that that when you bleed, like scripture comes out of your of your veins. Like, like when somebody yeah. tries to persecute you for, for the Bible, like that's what comes out because nobody can take that from you, you know. Yeah. And so, I think, you know, it, that brings back to the, the memorization of of scripture. Why that's so important is because yeah, it's in those times when you really can't find a solution that that the Holy Spirit just brings scripture to your mind and to your heart and is like, boom, remember this. Like, yeah. I know you're down right now, but don't have any fear because I'm your God. I'm with you. You know, I will raise you. I will keep you. You know, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And you're like, of course, how can I, how can I be afraid anymore? Yeah. Like you're in control. And so I think that's what I guess separates a true disciple from a proclaiming Christian is that, you know, a lot of pro proclaiming Christians are scared right now with everything that's going on in the world and, and, all, and all that. And, and the disciples were just like, it's cool. Like, yeah. this was written. We're just, you know, this is just confirming scripture. You know, it's just prophecy unfolding. And we're just sitting back and just looking up, waiting for our redemption. Yeah. So yeah, that's my short answer. <laughs> I don't even remember what the question was. <laughs> you asked me you asked me what what comes to mind when I think about, you know, love your neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, I know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a uh, sick Stevens guys. <laughs> yeah, that's me being sick. Um, <laughs> it's funny because I'll think of things that I want to <laughs> say while you're talking, but then I'm like, let me write them down. Let me have them finish. I need to write them down because yeah. I've forgotten at this point. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think of so when I see that, love your neighbor as yourself, and and I think like everything you said is super important because like you have to go, you have to go through the loving God part before you can get to the second part. Yeah. Um. And because if you don't have that relationship, you, you can't yeah. get to loving people. And the thing is, um, too, I'm so sorry to cut you off. But the thing is, too, is the problem that we have is that we try to do things backwards. Like we, we try to make it our own. Right. Yeah. And and that's where it becomes my truth. And my truth is not the truth. Right. Because yeah. God is very intentional the way he does things. Right. If you look at everything that Jesus talked about. Um, you know, the, the Lord's prayer, like there's, there's a process, there's a step-by-step, -step. this is a step-by-step -step also. And so the first step is to love God with everything. And then, because if, if you love God with everything, then you can love your neighbor and thus, you know, uh, complete or, 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 or keep the rest of the commandments, like Jesus said. Yeah. And when we try to do it backwards, it's like, you can't. No matter how, quote unquote, good you try to be and to loving your neighbor, which, you know, a lot of people refer to like the golden rule, right? Right. Um, you can't really complete that without having the first one in place. And, I, and that's yeah. where we fail. Because the truth is, like, it's really hard to love people. <laughs> it is. It I, is. We, we, like, we need God. We need to know God's love. We, we literally need his strength to love people well. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to do it.
Yeah. So that when someone curses, that like my response, if someone talks bad to me or about me, and I hear like it's going to be to respond back in anger to to yeah to I, I to respond know. bad in a negative way. I don't know that Angie. Let me tell you right now, <laughs> I don't know that Angie. Okay, I don't know her. I haven't met her. <laughs> <laughs> that's because okay. okay. listen like I, I i would want to but li- literally god doesn't let me <laughs> like like there have been and i think we've talked about this before there have been times where i where i um have gone into arguments and to be honest marine i think most of my serious arguments <laughs> have been with you really and they're not they're not really that serious right um but like to me i guess to me they are I guess because of whatever the context is or because you're my brother and yeah it's just easier to argue with you <laughs> um and we typically maybe do it over text <laughs> or i don't know um but then my response always wants to be in okay i'm wrong and I, it, it always wants to be i'm right and you're wrong and okay let me go talk to someone about it so that they can confirm that yeah. i am right and yeah. so I can be justified wrong, right? in my anger. Right. Yeah. So I can I can be just and if I go to the right people, then they're gonna tell me what I want to hear. They'll be like, you know what, Angie, you're right, hundred percent. But then God is like, no, you have to come to me first. And then when God cut when I when when I go to God, he completely has to be like, but you're wrong, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. But you have to turn the other cheek, but you have to look at it from the other person's perspective but you know you can't be prideful but you can't you know and he starts to reveal things in my own heart where and and that's typically like where it, it's easy to get to a place where we are so prideful where we're like i'm 100 percent right but if we don't we're not doing what you said if we're not going to the word then we're gonna think we're 100 percent right 100 percent of the time but that's yeah. not that's not we're, that's not going to happen because we're not perfect people. Yeah. But if we go to the board, we're going to realize, you know, what is it in our own hearts that we're messing up and, and where we're wrong? And the thing is, too often we'll go to the word and we'll see something that maybe doesn't, uh, maybe we might not agree with. And the world, the world's response to that is, oh, I need, I must be right. The world's response is, I, I have to be right. Yeah. But, but that's, the Bible is God's word. So it's, if anything, it's not that you're right. It's you're like, the, I'm sorry, but God trumps <laughs> yeah. whatever, whatever I think is right. Exactly. If I, if I think it's right to, if someone punches me to punch him back yeah. and the Bible says, no, turn the other cheek, even though that feels right to me, I like I'm wrong. Yeah. I think I, I think I mentioned that to somebody once in conversation. I said, if you, if you, if you and the Bible disagree, then you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's that simple. Yeah, yeah that, that's like the tiebreaker right there. Yeah, look at right. the Bible. What does the Bible say? Doesn't matter what you think or feel. Yeah. What does the Bible say in reference to that? So, yeah. Yeah. And then when we look at that verse where it's so, it, it says, love your neighbor as yourself. Nowhere. So I think I heard this from a preaching. I really don't remember where, but. Like it says, love your neighbor as yourself. Nowhere in the Bible does it say love yourself. And I think that's because we're pretty good at loving ourselves. Yeah. Like, like we might struggle with self-esteem. We might struggle with our worth. Um, but we really love ourselves. And we see that when we put our interests above everybody else's. Yep. Like when we have that argument, we don't think, oh, how did I hurt that person? We think, man, they don't know what I'm going through. How did yeah. they, you know, how right. they hurt me? And why do, why do you think selfies are such a hit and our fees are not? <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. You know? And I mean, but but that's a good point. Like social media points to the fact that we love ourselves so much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, we love to be loved. Yeah. Um, but like we have to, the Bible also says, and there's another verse, I don't remember where, where exactly it says it, but it, it specifically says you have to put others' interests above our own so in an argument like how let me look at it from that person's point of view let me um let me look at their in like when i'm trying to decide what to do let me look at the other person's interests because we're always trying to again again we're we're very we're very selfish people (laughs) yeah (laughs) very selfish yeah um i was talking with mama bear 
the other night. We stayed up to like one o'clock in the morning just talking. And I think we were talking about the, you know, the love part of it. And I told Mama Bear, I'm like, I realized that that love is really something that you decide to do, right? Because yeah. when God tells us to love our enemies, right? Ugh. He says, pray for your enemies. If he's thirsty, give him water. If he's hungry, give him food. Pray for him. And then love them. How are you supposed to love your enemies? And yeah. I thought, man, if somebody came and, and this, of course, I use extreme examples, but if somebody came and killed my family, there's no way that I could love that person. Like, in my mind, I'm just like trying to, like, how? How? I can't, I can't love that person. But, but yeah. love, love is not the feeling. Love is the action. Love is what you do. And so forgiving that person against my feelings, that's what real love is. Yeah. So, yeah, I just wanted to add that. Yeah, and then that makes me think of, uh, I was reading the other day, what was, it was in Luke. So it's, it's basically um, Jesus is, you know, with the, with, with the people. And then there's this woman who's like a, who's a, who's a big sinner. I really don't remember the specifics of it, but um, she's, she's sinned a lot, basically. And the Pharisees look at him and, and are basically like, you know, call them. Oh, oh, I remember. Okay. I remember. It's where um, he goes to a Pharisee's house. Uh, the Pharisee invites him over. And then um, the woman starts to wash his feet with the with expensive perfume and with yeah. her tears and her hair. And the Pharisees like questioning him. He's like, you know, this this woman's a big sinner. Like you, like what what are you doing basically? Why why are you like he's saying it like Jesus doesn't know? And and Jesus' response is basically, um, yeah, but you you don't understand because her sins because her sins are big because I know that she's a sinner. Then her her gratitude is so much bigger. Like her yeah. gratitude because I've forgiven her sins. Cause he says it there. He says, your sins are forgiven daughter. Um, because he forgives her sin, sins that are apparently right. Quote unquote, so much greater because Pharisees, you know, are prideful people that think they're perfect. Yeah. Um, then she is so much more grateful. Um, and so that, that is the sense that it, I, I, I think that's the whole point of loving our enemies, because when we love our enemies, when we love people that uh, attack us and we in turn decide, you know, I'm going to love you anyways. No, if you're hungry, even though you, you, you know, stab me in the back, I'm going to give you food to eat. I'm going to go the extra mile to, to love on you. Then that's going to show God's grace. And it's yeah. going to like leave them like baffled. Like it's going to have them question you about they're going to be like, what are you doing? Like, this doesn't make sense. Yeah. And that's the opportunity to show um, other people the gospel. Yeah. That's how you kill them with kindness. Yeah. That stuff works. <laughs> that stuff works. When when people are trying to rip your head off and you're just like staying calm and still showing respect and being loving, it's like they're like, why am I trying to rip this person's head off? Like, they're not even fighting yeah. back. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that another point that I wanted to make. Um, I know we're not trying to make this one too long. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think the other side of it is gossip, which has always bothered me so so much. Like when when I see when I hear people gossiping about other people that I love or whether or not I, I do, I, I know them or not, it bothers me. Obviously it bothers me more if it's about people I love, but I'm like, what? Like, that's not loving people. Like yeah. first, first my thought is, okay, if you're going to say something crappy about somebody else, say it to their face. Yeah. Okay. Like, because you're just hiding behind people. But then my thought is, well, some people actually, <laughs> some people actually will do that. We'll go ahead and do that too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then, like, 
I just, I just think, you know, these, these people, they're made in God's image and we're created to, to love them. So I, we shouldn't be talking crap behind their back because that's, that's God's child, you know? Well, that's uh, not loving not... them the way we would love ourselves. Right. Yeah. Right. Because as soon as we hear someone, as soon as we're somewhere else and we hear far off our name, that we, we think that somebody else is like, we're quick to go and be like, who said what? what's going on right yeah um but we're so quick to you know bring someone you know talk crap about other people's name and and what they did and what they didn't do as if we're not imperfect people who mess up too like we mess up all the time so we need to give people grace yeah i I agree if if someone if someone what I, i think if someone messes up then you know it's what the what the word calls us to do is to go to them in kindness and be like, listen, brother, listen, sister, you know what you said or what you did that that hurt my feelings or or you know. But we we're, we're supposed to do it with gentleness and with love because that's what's going to build. That's what's going to be fruitful. Talking about people is not fruitful. Yeah. At all. Um. It just it just it, you know, it just brings other people into whatever is going on in our hearts yeah yeah no gossip i i hate gossip because it's so easy to fall into like yeah but when you realize it it's like you're like you're already knee deep in the gossip when a lot of times when yeah. you when you realize it like you you fall into gossip and you don't you don't know it right away yeah so it's a it's a dangerous one yeah yeah um i just thought of a verse yeah but i can't i don't know where it is you can't what um what does it say or how does i don't i don't know it's it's about building other people up um oh, it's probably in ephesians build others in the meantime tell them uh where they can find us <laughs> You can find us at ChristAlonePodcast.com um, or you can, uh, I forget, you, you're the one that does the social media stuff. Do uh, the number, the number. What? The, our phone number. Oh, our phone number is 407-796-2881. Feel free to call, text, leave a voicemail if you want, if you need prayer you have questions if you want to suggest topics that we talk about um whatever the case um you can do that um we do apologize i forgot to mention this at the beginning we were supposed to have our brother brett on from rad apologetics and um and due to some scheduling conflicts with the three of us um we were unable to record with him but uh we hope to have him on the next episode uh so um um Did you find it yet that was that wasn't long enough i think it oh. is in ephesians <laughs> all right well our social media is at christ alone podcast um except twitter twitter is christ alone but uh you can find us you know and uh all our all of our links are you know attached to all of our uh profile there on all these all right, social I, media i found it so oh, it don't wasn't forget it, it wasn't Sorry, don't Sorry, forget. Man. Also, we have our uh, merch store. You can purchase some T-shirts uh, on there that can help promote some conversation. And um, yeah, amen. Um, so it was in Ephesians. Uh, eh, eh. Ephesians, if Ephesians is four twenty nine, it says, "Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear." Like the only thing that the only things that should come out of our mouths should be to build others up. Yes. It should never be to bring anyone down. Yes. Amen. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So love your neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> love your neighbor. All right. Um, love your neighbor. Yeah. It, focus on, focus on the way that God loves you and, Try to copy that. You know, God loves you so much that no matter what you do in this life, if you repent and you ask for forgiveness 
and you ask him to come into your life and your heart, and you submit to him, he will forgive you of all your sins and grant you salvation. Amen. Through his endless grace. Amen. So, so turn to Jesus because he's coming back soon. Um, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just want to keep talking. I always want to default to, you know, um, everything that's going on right now because. I know. Yeah. But uh, we'll, we'll have to, I guess, sprinkle it around the different episodes. Yes. All right. Uh, so. What's that? I was gonna. I was just gonna say. Hopefully, we can have uh, Brett on soon. Yes. Yes. We hope to have him on the next episode. Um, he said he can record Friday at eight. So we'll okay. see. All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in this week. Um, we hope that uh, you know the Holy Spirit can use this podcast to equip you to love your neighbor. Um, and to grow closer in relationship with God. And, um, you know, we encourage you to read scripture and pray and to fast. Amen. And be ready because he's coming soon. Be ready. Soon. Yes. Any day now. <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys and God bless.